Hey y'all, welcome back to The Ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and you know baby Stella. And today, it is, uh, we're going to take a pause on laying our trees out on the bonsai deck because it's supposed to drop down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. And that would mean the trees that I've been protecting all winter at 32 and above in the greenhouse, cold house. Uh, that means that um, I would end up risking shocking them and their roots with the dramatic cold tonight. So, looks like Tuesday, it, uh, it is above freezing again at night, so that's when I'll put out those trees. But in the meantime, Stella and I are going to work on a couple of uh, trees from the Planner's Choice Bonsai Starter Kit. The Delonix Regia, one that's uh, a little more than five years old now. And, or excuse me, uh, Blue Jacaranda, that's a little older than five years old now. And then... I believe it's a three-year-old Delonix Regia. The Delonix Regia has some sort of insect. I'm thinking it's scale, really sappy. I'm thinking pre-scale, like egg sacs. Um, so I'll show you that up close. It's going to be disgusting, but at least it might help you in the future. And uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do with all that. That's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. Bye-bye. <laughs> y'all so here is the infected Delonix Regia and hopefully you can see it right there that's where they always attack it's right in the crotch of the newest Sit on my lap, or you want your own? I gotta set out all the bonsai tools and the soapy water and stuff up on the mantle till it's exactly game time because this one, she's quick. She knows when there's an opening and she attacks. But you wanna do it? You could scrub the rock here, clean your rock. No, don't dig on it. <laughs> Yeah, let me just let me just do this. So I'm just gonna as gently as possible without disturbing the leaves. I'm gonna dip it more. So without disturbing the leaves, good job on that rock. I'm going to try to um, get all up in there and clean out those crotch points. If you see right here, one, two, three, and four, these are actually. Dorm, I want it. I don't know if they're dead. Maybe the extensions did uh, kind of die off when they came in from outside to inside over winter. Um, but I haven't decided whether I'm going to remove those and let this new growth take over or remove the new growth and just snip the tips on these and hope for some back budding. All right. Daddy's turn. One second, baby. Do you want Stella's toothbrush? Why don't you go get Stella's toothbrush and you can show everybody your toothbrush. Good job. More? More? See a little bunny? Bunny in a rowboat. Yeah, go show mommy that one. Go show mommy the bunny. <laughs> All right, it's, it's coming off. I might have to like squirt it with just straight water to kind of wash out, wash off the little leaflets because these leaves are so sensitive. That if you leave like a dish soap or insecticide on them, first time the sun hits them, they'll they'll fry right up and uh -oh. they won't recover. All right. Uh oh. Just gotta get down to the base. You helping, Daddy? Okay, dip it up. 
clean that rock. Uh -oh. Alright, I gotta get my clippers. So this one up top here, this was the initial pruning, I'm assuming when it was just a single single trunk and it just these like to kick off uh, leaves on opposite sides of each other and they alternate this and like north, south, east, west going up and then until you prune them they really don't branch. Uh, if you're new with these, it took me eight months before I gave them all their first pruning. I have a bunch of uh, different Blue Jacks and okay. put it in her mouth. <laughs> yep. All right, Stelly, it's all fun and games till you put the thing in your mouth. Yep. All right, so since I believe these are going to do well, I'm going to take out these little nasty branches. Oh, it was dead. It's this one. It has a little green, so towards the base we might get a bud to kick off of there. This last one. Yeah, that one was green too. So, we've got some nice branching kicking out. I'm excited for this spring with this guy, the Stellonix Regia. Uh, if you want to take a look at the exact same species that was grown from the same group of seeds, uh, my broski... Ian at a back garden bonsai in Northern Ireland. He uh, he has one. Same uh, germinated, same time, same species, same group of seeds. Like I said, so um, very similar. Kind of let each other know what's going on because these things act like no other tree. It's, they're uh, they're really funny. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the um, the blue jacaranda. That was actually my first bonsai tree from seed, and we'll take a look at what that thing's doing. All right, so I think Laura took Stella in to the bedroom to put her down for a nap ski. She's just so into it. Anytime I take out like the turntable or anything, she starts getting all excited, yelling dad, dad, running back and forth, climbing on the table. So I don't want to discourage her, even though it makes everything way more difficult. So thanks for bearing with me. Not that I really have that much valuable to say, but hopefully if I said it, you heard it. Uh, so here we have my blue jacaranda that for years I thought was a uh, Delonix Regia because they came in the same um, Planner's Choice Bonsai Starter Kit, but it was either mislabeled or I made a mistake at some point and uh, it's a blue jacaranda. So the way you could tell the difference, if you have the, you know, them not even from the kit or um, actually from the kit to verify, but the, the blue jacaranda will come out with its leaflet. Looks very similar to the Delonix Regia, but then it actually has a little, uh, a singular leaf at the point, okay, where the Delonix Regia forms like in a recess, a concave ending to the leaf where that would be gone and it would just look like a V coming in. So um, irregular upright, it's got a nice little sway to it. Um, I cut it this height at eight months and now uh, February 16th is when uh, I germinated it five years ago so it's a little older than five years. Uh, yeah so I absolutely love this tree. I gave it an extreme hard pruning uh, end of season this year because it had just grown just terrible branches and I believe that uh, in the future, I probably will wire this one to create uh, a canopy. But in the meantime, while I'm just trying to thicken the trunk, I'm going to continue to let it grow out. Uh, pinch, the, nip the tips when I don't want to give it a full pruning. And uh, if it gets out of whack, it's such a fast grower, I don't feel bad chopping it right back to the single trunk line and starting anew. So with that being said, we have from the last pruning, two nice branches coming off of this side of the trunk and the trunk slightly divides okay and this branch is one that I left that was the only one with it what I thought was an active bud or dormant bud and it didn't do anything after the last pruning so what I want to do I would love to get another branch coming out this way at least one even two would be better 
Uh, so I'm going to prune it down to maybe just below where this part comes out. So it's a slight separation from the immediate trunk, bringing it out a little wider. And I'm going to prune it on a diagonal this way to hopefully get buds that want to kick out in this direction. All right, so just like so. Boom, boom. Oops, just like that. A couple of yellowing branches underneath here. This one down here. And this branch is coming right across, running into that one. So that's kind of, it's actually not a branch, it's a leaf. That's it, just one leaf for these guys. Um, and then at the top, where you can see it, you see these, they start to come out and fan out and that's where they open up. So I'm just going to grab the group of them with my pointer and thumb and I'm going to pull them right out of there. Call that nip in the tips. So what that does is it stops the vertical growth or the lengthening of this branch and it hopefully kicks more energy back to get more branching down low or um, at least kicks off more branches on these the branch I'm um, nipping back itself. This is a really effective way to keep it looking good uh, more times than not, rather than just pruning it all the time. Because you prune these all the time, sometimes they go to sleep on you, and you're just stuck with the tropical uh, stick in a pot for a while. Um, if you just nip the tips when, when possible, you know, more of the time your tree looks nice. So with this pruning, clearly I'm trying to get uh, some growth coming out this way to give the canopy some evenness. I don't mind if it wants to take a windswept approach and have the canopy more off to the side, but I want a nice full canopy. And right now we have one strong branch, one inferior one, and then one dormant one hoping to wake up. It's definitely alive right there, so we shall see. So that's going to do it for today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai, y'all. I uh, hope you enjoyed yourselves. I'm very much looking forward to getting back outside and further setting up my bonsai benches. But if it's going to be a really cold day and you got to press pause, that's why we at least grow the tropicals inside so you have something to do year-round. So I'm Jared Paul, and for my family, yours, cheers.